Welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. I'm Eric and on today's show we're going to talk about brining because it is a holiday season and turkeys are going to be the star of the show. But what happens if your turkey turns out like the one on National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Your guests and family are going to be surprised and you're going to be embarrassed. When Amy has me cook the turkey and then she cooks the rest of the dinner, I always cringe because it's kind of like a me versus her. She's her songs for everything. It better turn out. I'm salsa turkey. It's all I got to do. If I blow it, dinner's finished. So I do like to brine. Uh, we brine all kinds of things. Uh, competitions, food for everyday eating, and of course, anytime that we cook uh, chicken or turkeys. Let's talk about brines. <music> So what is a brine and how does it work? A brine is just simply salt water. You're going to immerse your meat in it and the strong concentration of the salt is going to move into the meat. And unlike a marinade, it'll penetrate much further than just say like a quarter of an inch or so. Um, what it does is it works with the proteins, uh, with how the uh, proteins are all twisted up and everything. And when you cook, the water in, a, in the meat will actually twist and squeezes out. The salt helps the water actually stay in there. So the result is you have you know, quite moist meat. So what's the difference between brining and marinating and then when would you kind of want to do either or? Marinating of course is going to impact a lot bigger flavor. It's not nearly going to be as salty. The idea of brining of course is to have a lot of salt in the water so it gets into the meat and it'll penetrate quite a bit of the meat where marinades tend to sit on the, sit on the surface and they'll penetrate you know maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Um, so those are great for things like steaks which have like a large surface area and you know you're taking a bite, a cut, and you're going to get like a big flavor from, you know, number of acids that you put in a marinade, such as wine, vinegar, fruit juice, whatever, maybe a little bit of salt, and then, you know, unlimited seasonings and spices. Where with the brine, it's pretty much salt water, and of course you can add sugar, and I'll talk about that later. But with the marinades, they can uh, tenderize a little bit. If you have like a papaya extract, or you have a lot of acid or you leave it in for quite a while then it can soften the meat and then of course you got to be careful if you make it too strong or leave it in too long then you get mush where brines they work kind of on the proteins and marinades work kind of on the surface meat so there's a little bit of difference there and then of course brines will impact flavor but not as much as what like a marinade was especially if you have a strong marinade um, it's going to be a lot more bolder than that. So when to marinate or when to brine? Um, marinating, of course, is not limited to what kind of meat you'd use it on. Where brining is traditionally used on the lean cuts of meat, such as uh, fish, poultry, or pork. Um, marinades um, are perfect for meats that have, you know, quite a bit of fat that normally would help keep the meat moist where uh, brining really doesn't benefit that kinds of meats. So can you use um, like a uh, reduced sodium version of brining? And the answer is no. Uh, if you're on a, a salt restricted diet um, you might want to avoid uh, brining and try other uh, methods to try to keep the meat moist as possible. Uh, the has to have quite a bit of salt in it so that way the amount of salt in the water is higher than what's in the meat so that way it moves into the meat. So when you're planning to do your brine uh, you need time management basically. So if you're doing a small uh, meat like say uh, chicken breasts or maybe pork chops you know four to six hours might be enough. Uh, if you don't have that much time you might be able to increase the salt a little bit to you know, make it work a little faster, so to speak. But if you're going to do something big, especially something that has bones in it, like turkey, 
uh, it can take easily 12 hours to even 24 hours. Some people even go 48 hours. So you may need to practice with this. Obviously, you don't want to brine it too long. You may not want to use too much salt because the last thing you want to do is have the meat come out excessively salty. So when you're planning for your brine, you need to figure out what kind of salt do you want to use since that is going to be the main ingredient after all. Uh, there's you know, regular salt, there's kosher salt, and of course sea salt. The main difference is when you use uh, regular salt um, such as this, make sure it doesn't have any iodide in it because uh, you can pick that up the taste of it and it's going to cause like an off flavor. So that's a concern. But what's also a concern is because of the size difference of the crystals, kosher salt takes up more room than what the um, uh, regular table salt does. So a cup of each is not the same amount and your solution will be less uh, strong if you use only the kosher unless you keep general math in your head. Add an extra 50% for kosher salt. So if a recipe for say one gallon of brine calls for a cup of table salt, then prepare for 50% more. At a minimum, I would go a cup and a half for the kosher salt. And even within brands of kosher salt, the granules can actually be different sizes. So that's even a little bit off, but it's just a rule of thumb. If you're gonna make two gallons for a turkey and you use two cups of the regular salt, for people using kosher, you may need to you know, double that. So instead of using two, uh, go as high as three, three and a half cups, okay? Um, sea salt also is a little bit different, so you have to take that into consideration as well. Sugar. Sugar is one of the common ingredients in a brine uh, for flavor, of course, but what it also does is it helps cut the saltiness taste. Now we know um, when you're done brining, you're going to need to rinse off your bird or whatever it is that you're brining, and that helps. If you leave that on, it's just going to taste more salty but sugar will help cut that. So you can use uh, regular white granulated sugar, you can use brown sugar, uh, fruit juice contains sugar, honey, uh, it's just a variety of things you can uh, use for that. Seasonings, um, wide variety. So, so when it comes to seasoning your brine, besides having the sugar and, if you want, and of course the salt, um, it's a matter of what flavors do you want to put in there. You can keep things simple and just go with some of the uh, peppercorns from like a black pepper or maybe some allspice berries. Uh, but if you want to jazz it up a bit, you know, you can put in, you know, four or five leaves of um, uh, bay leaves, um, whatever your favorite barbecue rub is, um, some thyme, uh, if you want a little heat to it some flavor from that stuff, put some peppers in there, or put some hot sauce, sage, uh, parsley, here's some cilantro, uh, rosemary. Uh, you can take um, lemons and just cut them up and throw them in there. Or if you have some lemon juice, you can squirt that in. Same thing with any fruit. You can take apples, anything you want to do with that. Pour apple juice in there, um, throw um, onion in there. Uh, you can also cook the stuff, for example. In other words, salt doesn't dissolve in cold water very easily. If you feel like stirring it long enough, it will. But if it's very granular, it may take a while. If you heat it up, whether it's to a boil or close to a boil, it'll dissolve a lot easier. Um, but if you have other ingredients in there, then that might help incorporate the flavors a little better. So it kind of depends upon what you want to do and what kind of recipe you're really looking for. But at a minimum, you're just looking at salt water, optionally sugar, and a few spices. When you're doing your planning for what kind of container are you going to put your brine and turkey in, you need to give a little bit of thought as to what is safe. Um, I understand some people are using trash bags, other people are using the five gallon plastic containers you get at Home Depot or Lowe's, and those aren't food safe, so I don't know why they're even using those. What are better options are to get something like a uh, oven bag 
uh, for your uh, turkey. It's made for it. Now it's not that strong of a bag, so it may rupture if you're carrying it around. So just be a little smart in how you do that. Uh, you can use it to line a bucket or something else that you may not want the um, solution to touch and the turkey to touch, but it'll at least be safe for you that way. Uh, other things you can do is, is a pot. If you have a pot this large, it's sturdy enough, you can put the brine and the turkey in and you don't have to worry about it breaking. Uh, of course, it's bulkier, so it's gonna take up a lot more room in your refrigerator. If you don't have the room in your refrigerator, you can put it into an ice chest. Um, also, if you live up north or somewhere where it's cold, you can leave it directly outside if it's, you know, what, 40 degrees or cooler. So that way uh, you don't have any problems with that. If you are going to use a cooler, uh, some people I know will just use the styrofoam ones. That way they're only like a couple of bucks or disposable. But still, is that styrofoam food safe? If it is, then use it. Um, otherwise, when you're done with it, you do want to get rid of it because it's not, there's really no way to sterilize those things. It's just, you can't sanitize them, period. So when you're done brining, um, you're taking your meat out of the refrigerator, out of the cooler, from outside in the cold, wherever it is, and what are you going to do? Uh, you're going to go ahead and throw away the brine and any solids you had with it. So if you had any fruit, garlic, onions, throw it away. You can't reuse them. It's just not safe. Uh, because of all the bacteria due to the raw meat exposure and all that. Uh, you also are going to rinse off very well. So I don't care if it was turkey or chicken or pork, rinse it off very well. Why? You don't want that extra salt that's on the surface of the meat. You don't want that anymore uh, because that obviously will combine with the salt that's inside the meat and it'll probably taste a little too salty and then you won't want to do this anymore. So rinse it very well. When you're done rinsing it, you're going to want to dry it off. Uh, so you can usually take paper towels and just pat it dry and that'll remove most of the water but not all of it. If you have some time before you're going to cook, put it somewhere that it can air dry. Uh, if you have any room in your refrigerator or in your cooler, let it sit there hopefully for a couple of hours so that last little bit of water will either evaporate or get reabsorbed into the meat. The reason is when you're cooking, if you want crispy skin, um, you want all that water off because it takes longer and it also takes more energy to dry out that skin and you don't want to basically overdo your meat just to get the skin looking good. So that's kind of a little bit of insurance right there. Get it as dry as you can. Um, if you're doing um, skinless meat, like say boneless skinless uh, turkey breast or chicken breast or something, then just pat it dry and that should be good enough. But with the skin, you really need to get that as dry as possible. And then just to reiterate on this little talk, be food safe. You've got meat, a lot of it potentially, and you want to be able to prepare it where people will not get sick. You don't want to put it in a container that's not safe. You don't want to leave it out at room temperature where it can be unsafe. And you also don't want to reuse any of the liquid once you're all done with it. And if you follow these, uh, the meat should come out uh, very juicy, tender, and uh, you'll want to do this in the future. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please you know, click um, subscribe. And also, um, we're on Twitter at Twitter slash Amy Learns to Cook. And um, our website is uh, www.amylearnstocook.com. If you'd like to see a video on how to make a turkey brine, then watch Eric's video. Eric's turkey brine.